biggest thing for you to improve on, um, stepping up and being a starter? Um, I, I think I think everything. Uh, the playing the run, being being started as the run, because you know I'm not as big of a guy, so being solid to run and just just everything, improving at a fast, at a fast rate. You know, I'm, I, I think I got a lot to prove. So. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast. I'm your host, LeBron Stephan. <clears throat> Welcome to episode 17. We have a very special guest today, former Ohio, the Ohio State and NFL offensive guard, Brian Browning, um, current co-owner of the Pitt Barbecue Grill in Columbus, Ohio. Make sure if you're in Ohio or Columbus, go check him out. Wonderful barbecue place. Have him on the show for today. Should should be a great one. Just send him the link. Yo. Yo, what's up, Big B? What's going on? Can't call it, man. How you been, bro? Good, man. Good, man. Can't complain about you. Man, not too bad, not too bad. And I appreciate you jumping on the pod with me, bro. I'm sure. I, I, oh, yeah, I, know you're busy. Yeah. I know you're a busy man, business owner, entrepreneur. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Trying to... Trying to stay busy, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't nothing else to do, but to stay busy and stay with it for real, man. So right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. So I call this podcast the After Effect Podcast, and I essentially created it because I feel like you know us as athletes, we've been athletes all our life. We all have some kind of after effect, you know, some good, bad, and different things like that. So it's basically just uh, giving us a voice to, to kind of relive, um, you know, our childhood and just our career, and then more importantly, the after effect what we decide to get into, you know, when our sports career is over. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. so it'll be cool, man. We can dive right into it. Before we go into your childhood, I, I really just want your take on the current climate of college football right now, right? You see, I got my jersey in the background, but. Yeah, yeah, I, looking I, good. I, I'm supposed to have my Hawkeye gear on, watching watching the, the Hawkeyes. <laughs> You're supposed to have your Buckeye gear on, watching the Buckeyes. Right, play. right. Uh, it's a weird time. You know, we, we've had Big Ten football. Sit, Pretty much as we was born, we grew up watching it. We both played yeah. it. So, what, what's your take on what's going on? Big Ten, Pac-12, Mac, no football, but the SEC still playing. The uh, ACC right. still playing. It's so yeah, that's the, it, it's kind of it's, it's it's eerie, man. It's very eerie. I'm actually in the other room. I'm watching. Uh, I think Kansas State is playing Arkansas State, and yeah. Arkansas State is beating Kansas State right now. So it's kind of like it's. It's just, uh, it's iffy, man. It's just, you know, on both sides, I, I kind of, I, I get it, I understand, mm -hmm. but my heart just goes out to the players, man. You know, you know, as a player, you know, right? You put, you, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot already on the line for you. So, you yeah. know, the virus thing, that's another thing on top of it, and you know, a lot of times as players, you know, when you're that age, you know, it's just like. I don't care. Let me go get it. Like this right, is my right. opportunity. You, you know I that. Only get so many <laughs> seasons in the, you know, I only get four or five seasons. If I'm lucky, maybe three. And I, I just want to go out here and get it. Right. So you feel for them. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of it, you know, I, you kind of feel for you know the the officials there. You know, they they you know they they call themselves you know trying to put the kids first. Mm -hmm. With the virus, you know, so there's a ton of unknowns. You know, mm -hmm. and you know they're just trying to. I guess trying to, you know, say them, you know, you know, be the adults of the situation more or less. Right, and say, right, like, right. Let me try to do the thinking for right. you and you catch See, on the back end. But it's it's tough, man. Yeah, it's man. It's I mean, I, I would definitely agree with you. Like you said, it's tough because you see it from both sides. And you know, we talking about 18 to 23 year olds that's, you know, playing big time college football. And obviously, you know, they all have a dream. They want to play, they want to get to it. They've been putting in the work you know, the whole year. And uh uh, like you said, just seeing it from both sides, I think the NFL did a great job of like kind of like uh, putting out the, the guidelines and then making sure they're following them and only allowing like I think 9% of the stadium to come. And you know, Ohio State, y'all said like 108,000. So <laughs> right, right. I would think yeah. that, would, that would only be like 16, you know, like maybe 12, 16,000 uh, people. But to be honest, man, I think the Big Ten and the Pac 12, I think they came out saying that they were going to postpone it to the spring, thinking that other conferences were going to yeah, follow suit. Yeah. And then right, right. when they didn't follow suit, like they just found, <laughs> they found a way. I think they kind of like 
I think they uh, model the infrastructure of the NFL. Just, you know, mm -hmm. um, less people mm -hmm. and just making sure everyone's getting the temperature, make sure everyone has masks. And, not, and look yeah. today they plan and they plan yeah yeah so it's, yeah I, I guess like you say it's 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 rough because uh you know the universities did stuff like they kind of told the you know like hey if we're gonna have a season these are the this is how you need to be training this is what you need mm -hmm. to be looking at this down the third and then i think everybody jumped on board with it like, okay mm -hmm. you know one position group workout at a time no team workouts right. we're gonna meet this way we're gonna meet on you know meet via uh virtually and, right. you know, you do all these things thinking that in the outcome, we'll have a season and then right. you roll into camp. Actually, let camp start. Like, right. <laughs> all practicing. Everybody in camp. Started, yeah, yeah. And then say, you know what? We're going to put a plug on it. And the, I think that's kind of the, the toughest thing. I see, if, you know, if they did nothing and then they did the testing, like, hey, this is out of control. We ain't right, doing right, anything. Right. right. Let's jump on it and shut it down. But you actually right. put this stuff in place. Man. Made these people do these things. I know uh, players at Ohio State, they're staying essentially by themselves, like almost in quarantine, just in case mm -hmm. someone does get sick. It's easy to cut them off. And we've been doing this stuff for months. And then right. can't roll around and say, like, nah, we ain't going to do it. Right. <laughs> right, man. And like, and one thing that I was thinking about, and like you said, you feel bad for the players. And I feel, I, I think I have a lot of empathy for the players because, like you said, man, you put in so much work and a lot of players, you sacrifice. A, a lifestyle and just all different kinds of things because you want to be successful as a football player right. and and like you said for them to start camp and then like three days in four days in say that like like it's going to be in no season like you can only imagine you know what the players are going through and yeah. you know how they probably trying to stay sane and not get down on themselves and all those things so it's it's definitely a trigger down effect and it's definitely bigger than you know just the virus in general but i think the players need to be uh, there needs to be more empathy for them too, because yeah. you know, I think that's hard to deal with. Yeah, that's 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 rough. That's that's it's rough. Like it's just a sticky situation. Mm -hmm. Um, for the for the guys that's not playing, you know, the seniors, uh, you know, trying to go into the NFL. You right. know, I, I know Ohio State had a player recently opt out. Right, right. I just, just yeah, I just saw that this morning. Like a top yeah. same position that you played, played he's like guard. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, say he was a right, top right, guard. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, top guard. So he's like, you know, he's most likely like a first round mm -hmm. draft pick, you know. And once you know, then he starts trickling out, and then you know, you got the other singers that's like, you know, it's time to try to go on. And it's just, it's just, it sucks. So, I mean, I know they've been rumoring that, you know, hopefully they have something going on around October. Hopefully it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I saw, I saw that, man. I'm doing little, little practice for, you know, a month and then just kind of roll out a season. Because you start missing so much at the university. I mean, I know, at the conference, you know, like, okay, because so these other conferences are playing, you know they're just going to roll on. They're going to have their playoffs. They're going to have mm -hmm. the bowl games. Mm -hmm. You just miss out on the whole thing. It's man. just a, it's a bad look. <laughs> man, right, right. It's definitely a bad look, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I, and I, I appreciate your take on that, man. But we can dive into, uh, you know, the Cleveland culture. We both from Cleveland, born and raised. So just talk about some things that, that stood out to you growing up there, man. Um, talk about any influences or mentors that you had growing up. Um, I know for me, I'm like, I had people like, uh, like growing up, just as a young guy, six, seven, eight years old, uh, I had people like Desmond Howard. Like, um, you know, I grew up like around Lee Road and Miles area. And so Desmond Howard went to my elementary school. He went to my middle school. Uh, and so he came and talked to us back when I was like in like the third grade. And I just really remember that. And I was yeah. motivated to, you know, try to go hard at football and, and go hard at my academics. And so just talk about the Cleveland culture in general and talk about anything that stood out to you. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I mean, I see, I mean, you know, we both, you know, we Glenville kids, you know, we, we both are tar blooders here. And, um, I guess growing up for me, I was always a, a big kid. Like I was huge. Like you know, if yeah. you've seen me in elementary school, you're like, no way that kid's in elementary school, middle school. Saying like, no, that dude is grown. Like same way. So, growing up for me, I guess a, a big influence I never forget. I was in the, um, I was in the fifth grade. I was in the fifth grade. My brother was in the eighth grade. So my brother went to, um, uh, he went to Spellacy. Okay, okay. So, so Gen Academy is in, in Spellacy building now. So. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. I didn't know and that. So my brother <laughs> went to that middle school. So he was in the eighth grade. I was in the fifth. And my, my brother had a track meet at, uh, at Patrick Henry. So at, mm -hmm. at Glenville's field, my brother had a track meet. My brother was a big guy. He wasn't as big as me, but he definitely was a big guy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I remember Coach Gann coming up and was like, I'm in the fifth grade now. I, I really don't know too much about – I know football, but I don't know too much about high school football. He's like, yeah, going to yeah. be a tall brother one day. Okay. I'm like, yeah. okay. Like, you know, sounds <laughs> cool. Like, yeah, you're going to yeah. be a tall brother. Yeah. And then same thing for your brother. Your brother going – he's going to come here too. Yeah. And then <laughs> sure enough, my brother actually – he at the middle school, he goes on to high school. He actually went to Max Hayes for a year. Okay, where there okay. is no football, and then he didn't come over to Glenville until he was a sophomore. Okay. And um, and essentially, once he started working out for football, I started working out for football. So in the mm-hmm. sixth, seventh grade, I started going to the, the Glenville workouts, lifting weights, running wow. with the guys, kind of wow. doing that. And that yeah, kind of was my mindset growing up. Like I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a football player for yeah. Glenville High School. Yeah. And see how that goes from there. And then when that kind of start clicking. That's when the whole Glenville program start clicking. That's uh-huh, when you had your Darius uh-huh. your Darius Hylees, you had your Dante Whitners, your Troy uh-huh, Smith. Troy Smith, yeah. And, you know, the guys before them, the guys that graduated with uh, with Pierre, they mm-hmm. went on to play college ball at Toledo. Mm-hmm. This, this group of guys, like, now you got, now it's a, it's a real thing. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like we are sending guys to college to play football. Yeah. Kind of jump right onto that bandwagon and just kind of uh-huh. ran with it from there. Man, it's uh, it's funny that you bring bring up Pierre Woods' name because I actually I'm interviewing him uh, on the next show. Uh, but okay. I talk, but but I talk, but I talked to him on the phone, um, probably like two weeks ago, and I was just telling him how, uh, I think I was probably like nine years old, bro. Like, <laughs> my dad took me to a Glenville game, and and this was when Pierre was he like the start, the star defensive end, he like the star in the city, and uh, I just remember like never seeing anybody like that tall, but that like rocked up and solid but like you know it's funny because when you're a little kid like he was like 225 <laughs> like so he wasn't even big but like yeah. when you only when you only eight years old I'm looking at him like man wow like and and right. I had ver- I had just started playing uh and they, and I had played defensive end too so I'm just like thinking like man I, I'm that, that's gonna be me one day that's gonna be me one day so I, it's crazy yeah. like just your influences and it's crazy because I I even end up picking 58 at Iowa because at the time 2007 uh, Pierre was number fifty-eight at, at the Patriots, <laughs> so he always has been somebody like that. I that, that I look up, looked up to and follow, man. So yeah, man, he, Pierre is a uh, he is a great role model, man. Just the energy that he still gives to this day. Like when you I'm speak to him, right. the, the, the the genuine energy that he brings to a conversation, is the same way he was when I was in middle school. Yeah, I went to FDR. He went to FDR, and when he used to come back and like just kind of talk to us about, you know, you know, what he is, what he's going through right now, this, that, just like, man, you could do it. Like, buy yeah. into something. Like, you yeah. don't have to be, you might not be me. You might not grow up to be 6'6 six, six and, you know, 235 rocked in high school. Right. But buy into something. You could do it. And he yeah. really used to just pump that faith into the, into the youth. Oh, and now that we're adults, mm-hmm. same guy. Like, yeah. see you, what you're doing. Hey, yeah. I'm doing this. How's that going? Can I help you? Right, you right. know, what's, what's going on? And, yeah. and that's really who right. he is. And that's, yeah. He's just a, a staple of our community. You know, just for being sure. that guy, being that big and doing things the right way and setting mm-hmm. an example for us. It's just uh, something that you just, you know, you just, you just hope one day you, you, you make the youth feel the same way. That's Man, I, I'm, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like you say, um, model citizen guy, model citizen role, role model. And like you said, definitely somebody that you, try to iron out like how you move, uh, you know, on like the way that he moves as well, man. So yeah, man, talk about, so I, I know we talked a couple of days ago. I didn't know you went to FDR. Um, so we, I remember we went to every, my seventh grade year, I mean, your eighth grade year, we went, we came to y'all and I, I think y'all, y'all, y'all ain't blow us out. Y'all probably beat us by like eight. We, we, did, we did win, but I mean, that was yeah, a big, yeah, it, yeah, it was a close game. Year. Y'all had just beat us in the playoffs. My seventh grade year, y'all beat us in the regular season, and y'all beat us in the playoffs. Now, I was at seventh grade, I was just trash. I was at the end of the game. <laughs> that's all we had to back. But that was the game circle for me. Like, all right, we play winning uh, yeah. at home this year. Yeah, we yeah, gonna, yeah. We gonna take these boys out. We owe them one, and we got right. it. We got yeah, it. Yeah. We always put for the good team. Man, I remember y'all, I just remember y'all had a squad. I mean, like you say, yeah. you and Kyle, Kyle Jefferson, yeah. and Justin Dobbins. He was at FDR yeah. too, right? Because I remember, like, I'm like, man, this dude. I just was thinking, like, I, I like, you know, we, it was the inner city league, but it was like, we had some squads, man. Justin Dobbins yeah. was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, in the eighth grade. Yeah. Rob Rose yeah. was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, in the eighth grade. Like, yeah. Yeah. We, all had, it, we had some squads. We, we definitely used to go back and forth. Either, even us, we had a center that was like 6'3", 6'4". We was all yeah. 13, right. 12 years old. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, we definitely had some guys, though, man. Like I said, I'm just trying to think about some other guys that was on the team that went on and played great high school basketball. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely a competitive nature, but yeah, I remember Whitney Young. I, I, I would say I don't remember you on the team. Like you don't remember me on the team, but yeah, that was the game. <laughs> you got to get that done. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, man. Um, so my next question was going to be just you know your transition into Glenville and you know how that was for you. But I heard you say earlier that you know you had already started working out with them uh, in the seventh and yeah. eighth grade. So I'm sure your transition to their workouts in the ninth, you know, and and so on and so forth was probably a lot easier. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so like I say, so I started early, man. I was a I was a big kid and I was a fat kid. Like just to be frank, like I was like <laughs> one of those kids, like all right, he he's very he's tall, but man, this guy he's just too big. Like he's just a, like one of the, like a, you know a big kid, man. This yeah. is another way to put it. Uh, so I guess kind of circling back, I never really did. Like I played flag football when I was six, and other than that, I did no real organized sports. I was mm. I was a good student. Um, I was a good student, but I never really did any sports. Like the uni league stuff, I was, you know, they got the weight limits. I was way too big for that stuff. No need to even try. Uh, <laughs> way too big for that stuff. So, seventh grade, I started my first organized sport. I was gonna, I said, I want to make the basketball team. I'm trying to play basketball at FDR. I think at the time, I probably was like, I probably like six one, six two, and I weighed like two hundred and eighty pounds, like fat. Just, Dang, like, already. Just, yeah, just big man. And uh, so I started doing that. Like I say, I did that. And then in the winter, I'm working out with Glenville. Uh, I think I, I do shot put in the seventh grade for FDR. Eighth grade goes on. Uh, I do everything in my eighth grade year. I'm like on the soccer team. I'm playing basketball. Mm-hmm. I was on the wrestling team. I threw the shot put. I was like on the chess team. I did everything in the eighth grade at FDR. Mm-hmm. But from the seventh to the eighth grade, I lost 55 pounds. So that mm-hmm. summer, I worked out with Glenville football. You know, it's, you know, just the running. You know, no equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lifting weights and running. All that running, you're going to lose that weight. <laughs> lost, from the seventh to the eighth grade, I lost 55, 60 pounds. And mm-hmm. So now I'm like, and I grew a couple more inches. So now I'm like six two, six three, uh, in the eighth grade and probably weighing about probably like two, I'm well, probably down to like 235, 240. I'm actually lifting weights now. I'm, you know, starting to look like an athlete. Right? Yeah, 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 like yeah, athlete. yeah. <laughs> so uh, from there, but you know, no, you know, if you can't play the mini leagues because of weight limit stuff, there's no football for you. So going, mm-hmm. so me getting ready to go to high school, I was just always excited and just ready to have this opportunity to now mm-hmm. play football. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's a whole nother story how, you know, big kids in Cleveland can't play football until they're in high school, you know. by that, Right, like, right, right, because of the weight limit. Time, it's kind of too late. Sometimes, you know, for some kids, you know, it's a chance it may really just be too late for you for you to actually get in a good enough shape to actually you know, yeah, be an true. athlete, more or less. Yeah. Um, but, like I said, I was able to do it. I made that transition. Um, I went to, I lived across the street from Glenville High School. So, literally, it's a, a Hill, a gate, and I'm at, I'm in the back parking lot at Glenville. Yeah. FDR, FDR is around the corner, so uh-huh. me and a lot of guys make that transition together. You know, Devin Jones, uh, Raymond Fisher, mm-hmm. um, like I said, Kyle, he was a year younger than us, but Kyle mm-hmm. was making, was going to make that transition with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, you know, a lot of good players. There was a lot of a lot of talent in the neighborhood at the time. Right, right. Yeah. A, a big you know, talent pool. Yeah, yeah, we all kind of made that transition together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we rolled over to Glenville. Um, those guys was star, essentially star middle school athletes. You can uh-huh, uh-huh. Like ben, Devin Jones, like the stuff that they're doing in track and the stuff that they had did. Yeah, yeah. The community league level. Um, so kind of rolling over there with those guys and just trying to, you know, just trying to keep up. Man. You know, yeah, right, right. To, it's competing. You know, it's competing. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm the, I'm the big guy here. I'm the biggest guy. So, you know, they don't be a push around, you know. Mm-hmm. Learn some technique, learn how to play ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember pinning equipment on on the first time, having no idea how to pin equipment on. Like, okay, you put your – what you do with a butt pad? You hit pad. Okay, you put this uh-huh. stuff. You know, okay, and learning all that kind of stuff out. And then just kind of going out and learning and just and being tough. I know, uh, like I said, I listened to your show with Rob Rose, and, and that's one thing I say. If you go through the Glenville program, especially back then and now, 
Mm-hmm. You finish. You're not. A, you're not. You. You know. You might not be the best player this down the third, but you're not gonna be a sucker. Like, you're not right. Gonna right. Be, Definitely you know, not. You're gonna, <laughs> you know, you're gonna have thick skin going through that program. Yeah, you know it. Every uh, every day you gotta compete. <laughs> guys yeah. gonna be on you. Guys gonna talk about the shoes. If they can't be on the field, they gonna talk about the haircut. Oh, you know it. It, it, it never. It never stop. <laughs> right. Never stop. You gonna have to fight. You are gonna have to do everything. And uh-huh. going through that program, like. Yeah, you know, we don't produce no no suckers. That's for sure. That's it. That, that's come a out, fact. We'll, we'll come out tough. Like, that's right. For sure. That's a fact, <laughs> man. Um, one thing I want—I always wanted to ask you, man. So I'm I'm glad that that I get the opportunity to. Uh, you know, when once I got to Glenville, you know, I noticed that me and you were—I think we were like the only football players that were that were that were in honors classes. Yeah. And right. uh, and it's funny that you say that, man, because like you know, I went to Whitney Young, which was at the time the only. Uh, full, fully major works middle school in the inner city. So, you know, if, if you took honors classes uh, or you had a high GPA, that's where you went. And you had to maintain a certain GPA to stay there. Uh, and so, you know, at that time, 2006, 2007, like, you know, the inner city, in, in any inner city, but especially in Cleveland, it's not really cool, you know, to, to, to take your grade serious, to want to wanna be smart, to want to learn different languages, to to want to do those things. And so I remember always catching flack for being smart, basically. Like, or, you know, I used to always get tried for, for being in honors classes. And then right, right, so I remember, sure. yeah, I remember coming there and seeing you, it was like, because before that, it used to, it, it used to basically just be me. Um, but to see you, what, um, what were you able to like to tap into or like, what was your like base as far as morals to kind of stand tall into like who you were? and even though you in the hood, you in the inner city, everybody want to be cool and bad and do bad shit and get 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 the best girl and all that and being smart one cool. Like, what what were you able to tap into to be like to say like, hey, this is me and you know what I'm saying like it or leave it basically. Yeah, like I say, man, growing up in the community, you got to be tough. So obviously, like you say right there, you you know you get picked on for being smart. I was picked on for being smart since you know elementary school. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of how my, my, my late, my mother passed when I was 12, and that's how she raised me. You know, grades was always first. And I was, and to be honest, I was blessed with a sister understanding. So I wasn't going to go to a classroom, understand what's going on, and not apply it and get the best grade right. I could get. And that's right, the, right. you know, to me, it's a, it's a, as a young guy, like, this is a waste of time. If I understand how to, now, if I don't understand how to do it, right? okay, that's another thing you got to go into. But for me to sit here, understand how to do it, and just not apply it. Right. Not obey the rules and and um and, and be successful at it is is a waste of time. It's stupid to me. Right. So at a young age, I kind of always had that was always me. Like Brian, he gonna be smart. He gonna make you know he gonna be uh, a student. He gonna get mm-hmm. good grades. He gonna be on the honor roll. Mm-hmm. He gonna go to class every day. That's always who I was before sports even started. Mm-hmm. Once sports started, is then I took that same work that began to put it to sports. Hey, I'm going. I'm not going to waste my time with this. I'm going right, to be right. here. You're going to go 100, percent 110. percent I'm going to try to get better at this. You know, right. I need to be faster. I need to run this kind of way. I was a big, clumsy, goofy kid. You know, yeah. yeah. I'm going to do, do these things and, and keep that same mindset and same um, physique about myself from classroom. Mm-hmm. Use that physique. I'm going to become uh, uh, become an athlete with that as well. Um, and then I had an older brother. He was basically on the same path. He was yeah, always yeah, same path. He always. And so he kind of showed you the way. Yeah, he kind of. Yeah. You know, it's like this is this is our household. This is what we do. Yeah. Do school. We do our sports, and we're gonna try to excel at both. That's great. And I went over to time. high school. So, like you say, I went over to um, when I went to Glenville. So it is another Forest Hill is um, close to Glenville, and they also have a major role program. But it's a okay, smaller okay. school. Um, it's a smaller school, and they actually did. It was like kind of like a, like almost like a magnet school, like a middle school. Yeah, they yeah, didn't yeah. really play sports with us. In mm-hmm. our eighth grade year, they started letting them play sports with us. Cecil okay, Shorts. Okay. Oh, okay, Cecil. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know Cecil. Yeah, okay. Me and Cecil, we're the same year. So I remember in eighth grade, they started being able to play like sports with us. That was their first year doing it. You know, okay. Yeah. Uh, but when I went to Glenville, so I, my eighth grade year, I had three days the whole year. My eighth grade. I went to Glenville, they put me in a regular classroom because, you know, you just come from NPR. Right, right, right. You know, really on this, on this path as these other students are as far as the major work and going to honors classes. But I wanted to be valedictorian. <laughs> my, brother, friend, my brother was graduating number three in this class. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to beat on my brother. I want to be graduating number one. 
Yeah. You know, just regular classes, you know, a straight A's and regular passes are 4.0, but if you got honest passes, that's a 5.0. Right, right, right. And they, you know, they offer some of those type of courses um, if you could get all honest classes. So I had to go to the guidance counselor, like, show them my, my A grade. Yeah, um, your grades my, my and all that. Grade. Like, I got straight A's. I need to get in these classrooms with these other kids. So, like, when yeah. you behind on math, uh, you know, like, I'm, I forgot how it go, but, like, in the A grade, you start taking algebra or something of the sort. So, yeah. I, start like with geometry so I never had to, like took algebra I had to, like take a half a uh, semester doing algebra getting yeah. pacing out algebra so I could now get caught up with everybody else so I could right, right, basically right. get it running right. to be better Victorian um, <laughs> <and> so <laughs> that was the my goal uh, you know going to high school I know a lot of people don't even think about that but like I said I, I guess I had someone right there yeah um, yeah yeah I'm gonna go ahead one and yeah, your mindset was already different yeah i was already there so <laughs> when i did it I, and i went to high school and uh like i say i've been on coach again since i was in elementary school and you know he knew who that that's who i was i was mm -hmm. who i was as a, as a person mm -hmm. so he put that goal in front of me as well like hey keep excelling at both right this stuff will help you out keep excelling at both yeah. and i did it so i ended up you know graduating high school valedictorian number one in my class mm -hmm. um to work in athletics athletically uh, you know obviously earning a scholarship to Ohio State mm -hmm. I was able to get those things accomplished as a young age and really just because of having a plan and knowing that's what I wanted to do like this is yeah. who I want this is who I yeah. want to be having and, that and, plan and sticking to it right and sticking to it like and you mm -hmm. know actually putting them to work in and the sweat mm -hmm. behind it the time, mm -hmm. so. yeah it's funny man because I think man when I when I my you know I was a year behind you when I graduated I think I was like five I think I was I was five or four, but it like once I got there, Antoine McKinney was so yeah. far ahead of me. I mean, his, G, <laughs> his his QM GPA was already like four point five something or like yeah. some, something crazy. And mine was like I was over four point oh. I think I was like four point oh seven or four one seven or something like that. Then you had Shay, then you had Raina, and they was already they were super smart. They wouldn't get nothing but A pluses. So I think that's why I finished at like fourth or fifth. I finished right behind them. Uh, oh, yeah, fifth, because it was Raina, it was uh, Antoine, Benet, or Antoine, Raina, Shay, and then like Benet, then me, something like that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, man, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with some of that stuff with the GPA, like, you got to get on it early. Like, you know, that's why. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, kept, yeah, yeah. You got to get on it on, in ninth grade. <laughs> Being the regular classes. And, and, right. You know, I got to get over here now. It's going to be too late. Like. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So man, talk about like man your transition to Ohio State. Obviously, we Ohio kids, man. So I'm sure growing up, that was a dream of yours. I, it was a dream of mine. I was, I was so mad they didn't offer me, <laughs> right? But uh, but you actually, uh, doing uh, actually getting the scholarship and being able to go there. Then I just remember seeing a picture, um, at the time. I think you may have been a freshman or your, it was a red shirt year. But at the, it, there there was one point in time. No, this was your second year because Jamel was already there. Um, but at one point in time, it was like eight or nine Greenville guys all at the same, there at the same time. And so just talk yeah. about that transition. I'm sure it was hard. Obviously it's a big 10 university, the Ohio State University, but I'm sure it was a little easier for you because you had those big brothers. You had yeah. those guys that you can go to and ask different questions and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So my, my true freshman year, um, uh, true freshman year, I read showed it, but we had, uh, yeah, Troy Smith on the Heisman campaign, right? Uh -huh. We got Jay again going on to go first round. Dante had just left. Dante Whitney had just left, but when I was coming in, he still was there. Like when we started workouts, he still was there doing some workouts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so training, yeah. kind of boom, right in your head. You know, you know, if you know Dante, Dante is intense all the time. All right, right, all the time. What are you doing? <laughs> you're not doing this right. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not lifting more weights? That's Dante, like right off the back. So you kind of come in. And those guys are like, I've been knowing them since I was a kid. So uh -huh. before I went to Glenville, I was the water boys. I'm, Dropping off, I'm, I'm the water boy for the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the, so I know these guys. So, uh -huh. uh, and then I come in with um, Ray Small and Rob Rose. We all graduate together and go to Ohio State together. Mm -hmm. And other guys there, you had uh, Curtis Terry there at the time. Mm -hmm. um, who else is there? So Mario was there already, I think. Mario's already yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably missing somebody, but you know, we yeah. got all these guys yeah. already. Yeah, Mel, there. Mel came after you, Jamel came yeah. after you my year, and then y'all yeah. got Jamel Martin, I think, the year after that. Yeah, yeah it was right, a it was, right. a it was a bunch of y'all. <laughs> yeah, right. Then Shaq came in. Remember Shaq did a yep, uh, yeah, yeah, Shaq did too, yeah. That's 
before he had to make his transition on. But, you know, just a, a lot of Glenville guys. And, it, and like you say, it, it just makes me, it, it's, a, it's, it's different and that you get to go to school with your friends, you know, exactly, people that exactly. you've been growing up in your neighborhood with, especially exactly. when you go to a university like Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're good every year. Um, and you got these people with you to kind of just show you the ropes. I mean, when right. we was true freshmen, Ted would just, little Ted would just do whatever he can to make us, like, get comfortable. Me, Rob, and Ray, you know, pick yeah. us up in the pickle. Yeah. He had a little pickle truck at the time. Pick us up in the pickle truck, go to his house. Uh, his girlfriend, his now wife, Crystal, at the time, she cooked dinner. You know, so, so stuff like that. Yeah. Just yeah. kind of put some structure around us, like, hey. I know it's different, you know, you're not at home, but you know, you got people here with you to kind of right. you know, show you the way first off and then All let right. you know that hey, we're here for you. That's you know, super mental, dope, man. You know, whatever you need, always been like that. <laughs> everything you need, we here, you know, we're gonna get you guys, you know, through this program. Yeah. And um, yeah. it just helps, man. It's helps. Yeah, so, I mean now, go, go say, now, now that I'm older, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm be honest, I didn't really didn't notice this until like maybe a handful of years ago. Mm-hmm. I was the only black guy in the office of line room for two two full seasons at Ohio State. Wow. Never, like, never thought about it because, you know, I always yep. got my other guys here in the locker room. And this, and oh, this right, 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 right. So you never even noticed. Never noticed it. Like, you never <laughs> noticed because you know, I got friends, my really good friends that's on the team that I went to high school with and grew up with. And then those guys was like my brothers, you know. Exactly, you know, exactly. You know, they put me on, they treat me like anything. Hey, never even noticed it. And then thinking yeah. back, like, dang. So Mike Adams came to Ohio State. I was the like the only black guy in the room. Oh, wow, like, that's that's on. crazy. He was, there, he was there sometimes, sometimes he wasn't, and so it was just me. And I never noticed it because it's like that. That's kind of a testament to your coaches, to your yeah. coaches, and and the great job that they did, uh, kind of making you feel at home, and you know that you never noticed. Because I, one thing that I can say about my transition, what was really hard for me was obviously you know going eight hours away. I'm all the way in Iowa, and just the state in Iowa in general is 98% white. Like, so it's predominantly white school. And you know how we grew up. I, I never went to school with any white people other than like the teachers. So yeah. I go, in, I go, I'm going, to, I'm walking into classes, 200 people. And I'm like, it's maybe like two black people. Right. And, uh, and, but like you said, luckily, you know, I had like, when I, once I got to Iowa, our bill was there. So, so he helped me out there. A tweet was there. So they kind of helped me out. Uh, me and me and Bruce went together. So we we was roommates. We stayed together and tried to push each other along and make sure we stayed on on track. But when you, uh, it's crazy, man. When you come to inner city, you need those guys that you kind of know that help with that transition. Because it was even hard for me, and I was like a smart guy and I did well in school and and just all that stuff. But getting used to the the rigorous Big Ten schedule, man, it's not it's not easy. <laughs> It's not easy, yeah. Like a lot of people don't understand what you got to go through mm-hmm. to become a successful student athlete from high school to college. That schedule, <laughs> like the the the, the schedule that, that that's the killer. The schedule, <laughs> training to school, to the yeah. study table, to the practice. I'm telling you, do it just repeatedly, film, man. Film study. Just, I'm telling you. <laughs> repeatedly just keep doing it over and over and over it's, it's, it's just not it's just it, it's not it's easy it's not, yeah it's not easy at all it's not easy it's not natural <laughs> and you know it's a it's just it's, it's a tough i remember i know when you know when you finish up and you know because you know we, you jump on it right away so essentially that's your college experience your college experience is kind of going through that circle exactly you kinda, i know me when I, you get done and you think of back like Man, for regular college students, man, you got a lot of free time. Like, what did you do with all that? I'm telling you. What did you do with all that time? Like, man, you, you, you went to a class for a couple hours there, and, like, you was just done. Like, what man, did, what I'm did, telling you, bro. I'm still <laughs> thinking about, uh, I, I mean, obviously, I don't even know what, what I would, what I would want to get a master's in, but I just kind of want to go to grad school just to see how it is, just to experience mm. school as just a student. Like, yeah. no sports, no... And, and still have enough time to do whatever I'm doing. But yeah. I've already thought about that, like you said, because yeah. the schedule is so crazy. And don't be injured. Don't have treatment. Because, like, then you got to pay treatment. And- <laughs> don't be injured, right? <laughs> then you got to – then, you, then your schedule is really crazy because you know you got to get two treatments a day, sometimes three. I mean, just people don't understand that schedule, bro. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's, it's the it's the most it's the yeah it's, it's real. <laughs> so man t- man what like stands out to you obviously like you said you went to Ohio State and you guys were good 
every year. I was, t- you know, I was talking to Rob a couple of episodes ago. Y- y'all went to two uh, national championships back to back. I mean, t- what like stands out? You all, you're always in the BCS Bowl or national championship. Always win a Big Ten. I mean, we, we, we played in the Big Ten championship versus each other in 2009, um, and went into overtime. We, we almost got y'all on the shoe, man. I had like 40 people. I had I, I had like forty people there, man. I, we almost thought we got that one done, but y'all ended up going to the Rose Bowl. Lost, you, you funny, you bring that up, man. I almost lost the game. I almost, you know, we every one on the field goal. I almost got the field goal blocked, man. I oh, almost who, got the field goal blocked. who was over you, AJ Claiborne? No, no, Claiborne went over me. It was um, it was I can't think of the guy's name, but it was okay. the tackle I played against all day. I want to say maybe it was Ballard. Maybe? Yeah, 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 Christian Ballard. Yeah, I had him on a couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what happened was, it was two guys they lined up in front of me. Basically, you guys lined up the same way. So it's two guys. I'm expecting, you know, to get hit by two people, two pops on both shoulders, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm at left, I'll do left guard on field goal. So you guys lined up and think, you know, I'm about to get the hardest rush I'm about to get for the, <laughs> you know, for the day because you they don't really want to play field goal. Right, you know it. <laughs> Snap the ball. Whoever's on my inside shoulder rushes, but whoever's on my left side shoulder drops out. They like drop uh, out, like, you kind of just stand and do that. Yeah. So it's like I, I'm lunging, but no one's <laughs> on my left shoulder now. Oh, so yeah. So, right so, so, the, so the guy almost scores through. Oh, yes. I like grab with one of his shoulder arms. If you, if you ever look at the clip, you see his hand. Like, it's a good it's hand. Really like, close. Like, if it's a low kick, it's a good chance that the ball is going to get blocked. Like, oh, know, man. That would have been crazy. crazy. <laughs> I got it through. But I had a soft shoulder because my, my guy on my left shoulder dropped out on me. And I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that that would have been crazy. Because I remember, <laughs> man, I always tell guys, and I, because our starting quarterback, he actually went to Lake Catholic. From, he's a Cleveland guy, Ricky Stanzi. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he broke his ankle the game before we played, y'all. We was 9-0, going Northwestern out. He broke his ankle. They ended up coming back and beating us. I think we was like number four. Y'all was like number two or three. But I swear, man, I think that if he wouldn't have got hurt, if he wouldn't have got hurt that game before, it, I mean, the game, man, it would have been would have went in overtime. But I just think we would have had a better chance because uh, he was so seasoned. Uh, but we still ended up like playing pretty tough. And I always felt like we always played y'all pretty tough. It seemed like y'all kick everybody else's ass in the Big Ten, like. But I, I, we all we we we've always battled Ohio State pretty always, pretty pretty tough. Always, yeah. I mean, the way y'all guys used to do things, um, you know, I it's funny, you know, you know DeAndre, uh, you know, we on our our pit barbecue grill together now. Uh, I used to tell him when he was like, he told me he was talking to LeBron, like, man, I always feel bad for LeBron. Like LeBron didn't get the college opportunity like he was supposed to get. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro. Like, the line. <laughs> they, they, they didn't rotate guys. Like, who doesn't rotate their defensive line? Like, this, this, this is crazy. Like, bro, do you, bro, guys. bro, do you see, bro, do you see my face? <laughs> bro, 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 bro I, I mean, I just had, like I said, man, I just had Mike Daniels on the show uh, episode before, man. And, yeah, 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 I saw a clip, you know, yeah. Yeah, so he nine years in the league, Pro Bowl. I mean, he been balling, bro. Right, but balling, he, he always been a baller. Like, and that year, 2009, me and him, we didn't start, but we were the only guys off the bench that ever even got any little bit of time. Like you said, like, we, you know, we didn't rotate. When we played y'all, we didn't get no defensive snaps. Only the starters play. And, again, man, I could, I could talk to you, to you with your ears off about, that, about, about what that was. Like, yeah, yeah. Ra- racial bias, man, whatever. But we knew any other university, we would have been starters. And, but also we knew that – you know, our starters were good players. We was the number one defensive line in the country, rank, rank. Yeah, but right. we knew, but yeah, man, like it's. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, y'all had, you know, I watched the film. Like, so, you know, I know you there. I'm like, I'm watching the film. Like, when I see you play, like, he's a good player. He's good enough to play. Like, I'm watching him, like, he's good enough to play. But no, I sure. will literally don't rotate that defensive line. No. So, like, I'm just going to game plan for the guy I see because that's who I got all day. They're not going to exactly. play on anyone else. Man, I'm no, telling you, bro. Man. It's. It's, no it's, one it's, drives this in college sports except for I. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I can't, I can't even, I can't even tell you the amount of nights, bro, that I stayed up or didn't get sleep, just like telling myself, like, man, what am I doing wrong? I, I knew I was a good guy. I never got in trouble. Never been arrested. Never did anything. Always did did things the right way. Just trying to figure out, like, man, am I doing something wrong? Like, like on, you know, just, just uh, assessing myself, like. I know that I'm like, I know football. I've been doing this my whole life. <laughs> and then also, also, you know, you have the respect of your teammates. Like 
everybody coming in your locker every game, man. You know you're good enough to play. Don't don't trip. Don't trip. Just keep working. Keep working. But yeah, it, it was it was it was a hell of an experience to to, to, to say the least. And, and and you know y'all shit, y'all y'all play eight nine guys deep on the defense on the defensive line. <laughs> That's what, yeah, like I said, that's what, I don't know, man. That's, but, that's, uh, a, that's a whole other thing right there. A, but. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> what, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, the original question was about BTS and playing it. And, and yeah, just any, any, any moment, yeah, any moments that stand out. Any moments, obviously, because there's um, so many big ones. <laughs> yeah, like, there's so many big ones, but at the same time, man, you know, at Ohio State, you know, going there, it's like championship or bust, like, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, every year we feel like we're good enough to win a championship, and then, you know, like, we went to two, we lost them both. Um, and then going on, like my senior year, we really felt like, you know, we really is like one of the best teams in the country. We end up losing at West, losing to Wisconsin at Wisconsin. And, you know, we don't make the championship game. We, uh, I think that's the, that's Cam Newton's year. So that's the year Auburn yeah. won. Yeah. Um, I think I forgot what they played. Did they play, did they play Oregon? Uh, I, I don't remember. I want to, I want to say they played Oregon. Yeah. I want to say, yeah. And we had just beat, so I guess going, we had just beat Oregon in the Rose Bowl the year before that. So, uh-huh, you know, really, uh-huh. like, yeah, yeah. That's the year y'all beat we, us in the Big Ten Championship. Y'all yeah, went to the Rose was, Bowl. We went to the Orange Bowl. Yeah. Right. So, I guess the, the biggest thing would be, I guess, you know, at our time, we had lost the National Championship. We had lost other big games while we was there. So, when we beat Rose, uh, beat Oregon in the Rose Bowl, mm-hmm. um, that was big. Like, that was big for us. Like, that was the time, like, okay, we playing. Uh, another uh, high power offense. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're not going to think we'll be able to, you know, keep up with them mm-hmm. speed wise. You know, he's going to say, you know, Big Ten is slow and SEC is fast and Oregon is fast, basically. So we, we, we won that game. That was a big punch off our back. Like, you know, we won the big one, the big one that everyone was anticipating us to Yeah, win. yeah. And just lost to Texas. The year before that, we lost to Texas in the uh, Fiesta Bowl. Basically. Uh-huh. Second touchdown. Uh-huh. We had uh, Colt McCoy. Yeah, they had a squad. Uh, that was a good game. Yeah, they had yeah, Cole McCoy. They had uh oh man, what's his name? Deep as a end. Um uh a uh, Rackpo. A Rackpo. A Rackpo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Rackpo was an oxen card. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. He was an animal. <laughs> I to block him. I don't think I gave him any sacks, but he he had to get a pressure every time. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, we gotta get this ball out. Yeah, yeah, he was a dog. He was, he was an animal. But uh, we lost to them on the last second. And we had, like I said, years before that, two years before that, we lost the national championship. So they finally won that bowl game, and won that big one in, in the Rose Bowl. Against Oregon. It was, you know, a really good team at the time. You know, they're scoring 60, 70 a game. It was huge. Uh, yeah. Come back Man, when, you, when you played in the Rose Bowl, bro, like, did you ever, I mean, obviously, like you said, we be, we, we be so on the grind, like, and our schedule's so crazy. You never really get to like just sit back and be like, damn, I'm really. But did you like pinch yourself like, man, I'm in, I'm playing in the Rose Bowl and like we just won the Rose Bowl. Like just growing up, you know that's a bowl game you always watch on January first, the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Like, did you ever have any of those moments, or you just was like, you just was going with it, the grind, the grind, the grind. I had that moment. I remember we won. Um, I'm like literally just like yelling on the field. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going crazy like we had won that game, but going into it, like you say, just grind mode. I'm just thinking about what I need to do to win mm-hmm. this game. Mm-hmm. It's funny, man. I, I did an article um, actually this week. The article came out like yesterday or the day before, and a guy had, uh, was calling. He was basically calling because um, Ohio State was supposed to play at Oregon uh, this week. Okay, so he was yeah. calling uh, former guys like to kind of talk about you know the big role games that you went on. Yeah. Uh, when I was in school, we had a game at USC. I remember I, that. I remember that. Uh, uh, I was at guard, so I was like my redshirt junior year, and we okay. we, all, we got we got killed. We wanted to just talk about the experience of going on that big road game. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Um, and and it's kind of like I keep telling he was like he was like, and I kind of t- started talking about another game that we want we played watched the Washington Huskies when it was bad, and that's how loud it was. And the guy had a text me. He's talking chasing the article. One of my former teammates. He texted me an article. And then he had referenced me talking about how loud it was. Like, yeah, I thought it was pretty loud at, at, at Wisconsin. I thought it was pretty loud at Penn State when we used to play at Penn State. Yeah, yeah, Penn State I was, was loud. I was in my head thinking, like, I don't remember it being that loud. Like, I'm just so in <laughs> tune on the game. Like, uh-huh, like it's like, uh-huh. it really doesn't does matter. Like, I'm just right, trying right, to right. <laughs> how to make the block. So I remember it being loud here because I wasn't playing. I'm on the sideline. My helmet was ringing. Like, it was really loud to get in Washington. I was right. on Redshirt freshman, so I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm on the bench, like, you know, the hardest come out, I go in. Uh-huh. So it's like it kind of clicked to me then, but then like the other game, I'm thinking like, 
you know, it was great atmospheres. Yes, the crowd was there. You know, yep. Penn State always had the White House. Wisconsin was always rowdy. Um, but the look, like I just, it was, it might, yeah, it might have been loud, I guess. But right, I was right, 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 right. <laughs> 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 when I got a black, and well, you know how to execute the play, like that's all that really, that's all that really mattered. Like who, who I got a black, right. how to execute the play. Right. We win this game. Like, that's- Man, I remember, bro. I remember, you know, I, I played in Penn State in Penn State before a night game, like you said, white out. That get loud. Uh, the the big house gets real loud. The fans right on you. Um, but I still, I tell guys all the time uh, nowadays, man. When y'all made that field goal in two thousand nine, <laughs> when y'all made that field goal, Big Ten championship, big whoever wins go to the Rose Bowl. Da, da, da. When y'all made that damn field goal, bro, I never. Because, you know, it's 108,000, but I never yeah. heard that many people. It, like, I, my ears was ringing for, like, 10 minutes, man, when yeah. y'all made that field goal. Like, yeah, yeah, they rushed the field, right? Then the fans yeah, rushed the Yeah, it was so much on the line. But, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. like, that was the loudest I had ever, like, and, and we lost, so that made it even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I know, it, yeah, I had to, yeah. Because, like I said, you know, you kick a field goal, you win, you cheering with the crowd. Like, you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, and I think, obviously, you know, you know, that game caught a lot of people by surprise because we had a freshman quarterback. Our quarterback broke his ankle the game before. Nobody was giving us a chance, and we took took it to overtime and everything, man. So that yeah, that that game was nuts, man. Yeah, that um, was nuts. nuts. So yeah, man, talk about like your transition to the NFL. Obviously, it's all our dreams to make it to the NFL. You go undrafted. Yeah. Uh, I think you probably went through a bunch of um, obstacles and. Hurdles yeah. and roadblocks because I saw that you was you was with six different teams within those five years that you played from 2010 or 11 to 15. So man, yeah, talk about that experience, man, because I know I'm sure it was you know you probably had like a lot of mixed emotions because you felt like you can't you can't yeah, stick man. anywhere. You're right, right, right. It, it's definitely that. It's a um, it is it's kind of like a roller coaster, but then it was such a roller coaster for me. I I just got comfortable with it, man. So yeah. for me, just kind of going into my story. So like you say, I go uh, undrafted. Um, it's the lockout year. So, you know, there's no draft. <laughs> I mean, no, there's no free agency. After the yeah. draft, there's no all-season workouts. So, uh, the, basically, beforehand, your agent kind of warned, like, look, all right, if you don't get drafted, you know, it's literally, like, usually we just do free, free agency right after the draft. But, right, right, right. You know, it's just a lockout, like, it's just You don't know what's going to happen, yeah. Right. So, I, in my head, in my mind, I didn't think I would be drafted. To be honest, like, I've had, like, a really low grade. Like, mm-hmm. when I was like, okay, I probably won't be drafted. I'm not going to be upset about it, you know. That's my mindset going to, you know, we'll see what happens, but right. I don't think it, it'll happen. So draft goes on. I don't get drafted. You know, like I said, I'm fine. So we all, at the time, every basically every, everybody who's like my class, we're all in Columbus. So mm-hmm. we all go go to the workout, we work out in the morning. And at the day, most people came to our house. We like playing video games, you know, just kind of, you know, staying out the way, just working right. out. Staying out the way, yeah. Out the way. And um, I remember, so, uh, so now it's late July, you know, it's the campers rolling around. They start kind of, you know, they start kind of buzzing that, mm-hmm. you know, okay, the lockout's going to end, the lockout's going to end, and then boom, the lockout ends. And when I say my phone, looks literally the blows up, the blows up. It's, it's all these teams are calling me to sign. As yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's just something, I, it's the, the Panthers are calling me, the, the Chargers are calling me, the Raiders are calling me. Um, uh, St. Louis Rams, they're calling me. Still, it was St. Louis Rams at the time. St. Louis Rams are calling me. Um, and it's a, it's a couple other teams. Uh, yeah. But we really came yeah. down to it. So my my roommate, uh, Chimney Checkwa, he was drafted in the fourth round to the Raiders. So we were roommates. So when the lockout in, me and him were literally like he's sitting on the couch. I'm sitting like in our look like the, the chair in our in our in our living room. Mm-hmm. In the lockout in. So. They, Oakland really wants me to come, but they're not offering. And it's essentially at that time, they had put a cap in, too. So now, you know, when free agents get signed, you, you, it's a chance you can make, like, a good chunk of money. Mm-hmm. This time, it was like, we got, like, I think, like, maybe 10000 to fill out everybody. So, like, they're mm-hmm. offering the people. Some people are offering getting offered nothing. Some people are like, we we'll try to give you 1000 We'll give you 2000 Like, little stuff like that. So, Oakland's like, they're not offering me anything. But the uh, mm-hmm. head coach is like, uh, it's Hugh Jackson at the time. He's calling the chill man. Tell Brian to come out to Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um, so essentially all this is going on I'm on the phone with my agent and my agent is like um, well St. Louis is, is, is willing to pay you 5000 I think the charge was maybe 1000 Some Oakland was like zero 
zero dollars, literally zero. Like we, we don't have anything. <laughs> and, uh, and St. Louis is like five. So, you know, you try to sort all this out and like all these teams are calling you and it's like, well, I guess they're offering me the most, the most. They must really, they must want me the most. Like, right, right, right. I'm like, okay, I'll go to St. Louis. So I sign, I say, right, I'm going to St. Louis. Literally in a day, we move out of the apartment, we're throwing stuff away. I take two suitcases with me. That's all I own. <laughs> Where everything else is goes in the garbage, go by the wayside. Right. Go to St. Mm-hmm. Louis, it's a lockout. So essentially they had the rookies come in. It's in like within, I think, two days. Like if you spend a day with the coach, like day two, they start football camp. You go right mm-hmm. into it. Right um, into it. Um, and essentially, so it was, in my mind, like, like St. Louis was really hot this summer. And I'm coming from Columbus and then like St. Louis is just like really hot and humid. I just remember being there and like, man, I'm trying to make this work, but it, you know, it's, 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 it's different. Like we ride into football right away. You, right, right. Right. Hey, sir. you know, all that kind of stuff is going on. Mm-hmm. And so I'm there, I'm, I'm calling myself battling. I'm looking at the competition, looking at the older guys. Okay. I feel like I'm a good fit here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be fine. Like, you know, I keep mm-hmm. practicing. I'll be fine. I'm there for 10 days. Maybe mm. ten days. So ten days of training camp. Yeah, ten days of training camp. So it's before the first preseason game. You know, usually play the first preseason game about usually about two weeks in the camp, about thirteen, fourteen days. So it's like ten, mm. it's like ten, eight, nine days. So it's like, hey Brownie, we need to see you bring your playbook. And I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm like, oh, all right, all right, I don't know who this guy is. Let me bring my playbook and go with this guy. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know they're about to let you go. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, like, and then again, my little sinus bonus check at that time, like, here's your sinus bonus check for coming in. We're going to go ahead and uh, release you. Yeah, we're going another like, direction. <laughs> but this is crazy. So, it's, uh, my head, you know, this is it. never been in a fair thing. Well, that's, that's it for football. So, uh, you know, I guess that's it. Yeah. Go home. Uh, like I said, I got everything I own in two suitcases. <laughs> go mm-hmm. home to Cleveland. Um, I think the next day, my uncle and grand, they, my uncle and grandpa fish all the time. So we say we're going fishing. I'm, like, I'm trying to get my mind. Yeah, I'm going fishing with y'all. Let's go, let's right. go fishing. All right. So you know, by the time we get out, we get on the lake. My phone starts blowing, calling me again for passage. I just say, hey, you picking? You signing up your contract off of waivers? They had the first round, first pick off waivers. Uh, they had just drafted uh, Cam Newton that year. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, we're picking up your waiver contract. We want you to come to. Uh, Come to the Panthers. Carolina. Yeah. We on the lake. We just got in the lake. They got to drive me right back, take a suitcase, <laughs> go uh-huh. right to Carolina. And unfortunately, I stuck there. I stuck. I played my first year there. Um, second year I was there, and then I got released, and I kind of started bouncing around from state. Uh huh. And then I saw you. Yeah, was, yeah, was, yeah. And you did like <laughs> your longest tenure. You was like two years with the Steelers, right? Uh, so like a year and a half. My longest tenure was with the Panthers. So when I did my rookie year with the Panthers. Mostly on practice squad. I did get activated. I got activated and wasn't active for a game. Second week, I was active for the game. I actually played. I played one snap. <laughs> one snap. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one snap of glory. <laughs> one play in the game. We play in the uh, Atlanta Falcons at home. I get one play in. Come out the game. Send it go back into the game. The next week in practice, I dislocate my wrist. I'm out for the rest of the season. Mm. I dislocate my wrist in practice. I'm out the rest of the season. Next season, I come back. Um, I make practice squad again, and then I get released off of practice squad. And I go to the Browns, finish my year with the Browns, and then what I do after that? Finish my year with the Browns. That was the year the Browns had just got a new owner. So mm-hmm. essentially, no one signed the practice squad there. So after that, I went to the Giants, did all season with the Giants, went to Buffalo, mm-hmm. um, did some time in Buffalo, then they released me. Then the Steelers picked me up like the last two weeks of that season. They picked mm-hmm. me up the last two weeks of that season. And then the next off season, I dislocate my shoulder. So I'm on injury reserve for the whole year. So it, it looked like I was just doing it for a while, but I really was like, you know, yeah. just really just the timing of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. kind of worked out for me. So, so man, talk about the year 2015, bro. You get released for the last time. Like you say, man, you bouncing around yeah. for, the, for the past five seasons, uh, six different teams. But talk about 2015 when he released, and then I guess maybe it finally hits you, like, you know, football might be over, and, uh, you know, you decide to kind of possibly be done with it. Like, what – take take, take 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 me through those feelings, man. Was it any depression? Did you – was it was it an easy transition, or did you already have a plan on what you wanted to do next? 
Yeah, so how it went for me, man. So, like I said, I hurt. So, I'm going to camp with the Steelers. I'm doing pretty good. But at the same time, it's like, it's still a long shot for you to make the team. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm not a seasoned vet, but I'm kind of looking, you know, and I'm like, you know, they keep, you play a role and try to take it from there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I'm doing really well. I'm in good shape, great shape, playing really well. My wrist is finally back in order. Like, kind of took a couple of years for my wrist to feel good. Mm-hmm. I, uh, quarterback gets sacked, fumbled. I go to try to tackle a guy, I dislocate my shoulder. I hit him, my shoulder pop out. And when I pop out, I'm like, all right, this is not good. I've never hurt my shoulder, but I'm like, nothing serious, you know, like that. So I knew it was iffy. I go to the sideline, they can't get it in. They got to take me to the emergency room, hit me to sleep to get my shoulder back in. Mm. And so I'm thinking there, like, well, that's it. <laughs> that's my last <laughs> football. That yeah. was it right there on that play. Uh, yeah. They come back, and I said, they show up, like, yeah, you need labor surgery, you be out for the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, I got labor yeah. surgery. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking I'm done. Like, that was it. Like, all right, I'm done. I, that's football for me. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a good run, whatever. Right. Had a good run. Um, you're right. Had a good run. So I come back, and uh, at the time, my, 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 uh, well, she was my girlfriend at the time. No, she was my fiance at the time, now a wife. She was standing in West Virginia. So I went down to West Virginia and I rehab. I did my rehab there. And I'm working out. Like, so once my shoulder get back, you know, in the NFL, essentially, the, the team got to sign off on your injury. So, like, okay. Right. The shoulder is as healed as it's going to be, you know, essentially done with the, you know, the super long Right. Heal. So, okay. All right. Um, and so, if I'm working out, you know, in my head, you know, like, well, something might happen. I'm just kind of stay in shape. And just, yeah, yeah, you never know. Uh, my agent calls me. He calls me. He's like, hey, uh, are you in shape? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm working out. And he's like, okay, uh, you want to play football? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, what you got in mind, man? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It's like, I'm, I'm here. I'm in good enough shape to play. I've been working out. Like, I've been, like, been really, you know, getting to it. Like, okay. Yeah. A couple of, a couple of teams had called me about you. They were like, go out, make a, a, a video. You working out. Send it to me. And I'll send it to these teams. And then they, like, pitch you on, like, their their, their roster list. Uh, uh-huh. You know, for camp. In case someone uh-huh. get hurt. So, sure enough, I go out. I do a workout with the Dolphins. Do the workout with the Dolphins. They don't take me. I go home. And then after a week in camp, me and my wife is now, uh, we were married at the time. We were, we're now moving to Columbus. So we were in West Virginia, we moved back to Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dolphins called me. Like, somebody got hurt once you come in and play. So I go to the camp. I'm like, I'm just not myself. I'm just there. It's Miami. It's like 100 degrees. I'm coming oh, yeah, from. Super hot. Hot, super hot. So I'm there, you know, and I'm doing well. And I play in a couple of preseason games and I get cut. And I know, like, all right, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. My shoulder's messed up. I can't really jam a guy. My wrist is messed up on the same hand. I'm just not the same player. I'm done. Right. And, um, and then, so the emotionally, like, um, like I said, I think emotionally, me getting the, those dog that those weeks with the Dolphins was good for me, man. You know, you had yeah. I had put so much into football, and essentially, I only have really one serious injury before I hurt my shoulder with my wrist. And for me to go out like on an injury, I'm like, man, that's kind of just that sucks. But I got to yeah, get those yeah, last yeah. snaps in right. as a dolphin and actually yeah. walk off the field. Okay, yeah, that's dope. my stuff, and, yeah. and, I, and I, to be honest, that did a lot for me mentally. So when I was done, I wasn't chasing it, like you know. Oh, right, 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 right. I wasn't chasing, it, like, it, was, it was a pill you could swallow. It was like it was, it was cool. Pill I could swallow, man. Like, yeah. Uh, Canadian teams had a couple had hit me up, but they were nothing too serious. And AFL hit, hit me up. I'm like, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to do the AFL route. Like, you know, mm-hmm. there's time for me to get a job and just go on from there. Yeah, yeah. And that was, and that was good for me, man. Um, when I moved to Columbus, uh, like, I, like I told you, you know, me, uh, DeAndre, who you went to high school with, mm-hmm. um, and my other friend, Mike Johnson, we went to middle school and high school together. When I came to Columbus, they kind of essentially put their arms around me mm-hmm. uh, physically and emotionally. Say, hey, look, we're about to start doing some spiritual stuff. You know, we're going to go to this man's Bible study. Um, and my wife had already had a job. My wife was working the whole time. So, you know, the transition was smooth for her from us moving town to town. Mm-hmm. And um, they kind of put that arm around me. I personally didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, you know, I'm kind of going through like, you know, I, I feel like when you was talking to uh, your last podcast with Rob, you was talking about, you know, how I was a good student, but essentially I wasn't trained to work. Like I didn't have no right. job experience. So right. I'm kind of, <laughs> right, I'm applying for stuff. And, you know, essentially, it's like, I'm not even, I can't even get a phone call. Like, you just put right. it in, you know. Just Man, me either, bro. <laughs> so I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, I can't get a job, but, you know, I don't have any experience. Let me start applying for internships. Same thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Internships, right. I can't get an 
internship. Well, you know, I had played a little bit, so I had, you know, like, we was, you know, I didn't have a lot of money, but I was, you know, I was good. Like, I, you know, yeah. I'm like, let me just try to do something, earn some experience. Mm-hmm. Can't get a call back for internships. I'm putting in stuff and nothing back. You know, just email you, yeah. ain't, you ain't get it. So I'm like, I'm kind of just going through that mm-hmm. uh, transition of things. And at that same time, uh, like I say, my partners, uh, DeAndre, uh, DeAndre Mari, Mike Johnson, as in uh, Chindy Check, my roommate from college, mm-hmm. um, we are just like, you know, we're going to start a business. Like, DeAndre was like, hey, look, I don't, like, he was Bracey Dre, like, I can't work for nobody. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. So, you know, Dre, he got his own story, his own path on how he got to where he's at, but, you know, he's a, a great guy. He's like, I just can't work for anybody. Man. Right. You know, we should we should do something, y'all. Let's, right. let's get together and do something. So from there, that's when we kind of started throwing stones together what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And from that, that's how we kind of got to our barbecue restaurant, the Pit Barbecue Grill. And um, that's kind of was the, the first thing. So I don't have a job, but I'm like, I'm going to start this business. And we, we're going to start this business and we're going we're gonna to try to grow it from there. Yeah. And while I'm yeah. doing that business, I'm still, I still want to get a job. So I want to be honest, I, I work now. Like I, I want to try my hand in uh, corporate America to see, you know, right. how is it, where does it feel? Was it paying out? Right. And, uh, and the funny thing, it always goes back to, like I said, so we started our business, but at the same time, like I said, I'm still trying to get a corporate job. And it always goes back to, you know, what they always say is not what you know is who you know, right? Right, right. I had a grandmother pass in Cleveland. My, one of my grandmothers passed in Cleveland. I go to the funeral. One of my father's, like, essentially lifelong friends, uh, who ended up, he's go, he went to the military, retired from the military. Mm-hmm. But man, I got a cousin that works in Columbus. I'm going to get you in contact with him. He works in HR for Nationwide Insurance. I'm going to get you in contact with this guy. Um, and, I, and I meet this guy. His name is uh, Trent Mann. Trent, he, he passed recently, actually about a year or so ago. Okay. Great guy. I mean, he's one of the, like, for a black man, you know, he's kind of like a, he's with everybody saying. <laughs> he's, 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 he's actually, he actually was like what everybody says they want to be. Like, they want to right. be a guy that's successful and giving back. Yeah. And this yeah. this man to the T. Like this guy's like grabbing you know, whoever whoever calls him, come on, let's figure out what something for you. Like let's call these people and show sure enough. I go see him. I don't know this guy. He was like, Oh yeah, I'm a Ohio State fan. I kinda know, you know, I remember you playing this down the third. Let me call some people. And within yeah. a month, I got a job. Yeah. A connection I made, you know, all my Ohio State connections, all that kind of stuff, you know. I don't, I want to talk bad about anyone, but when I was coming back, trying to look for a job, it's like I'm telling you, it's crickets. It's, just, it's tricky, like it's you know. Crickets, okay, right. we're trying to get you in contact with this person. Okay, mm-hmm. they're not hiring at this time. Are you mm-hmm. willing to relocate? I'm like, no, I just moved back to Columbus. While I just moved here, <laughs> right. I can't just up and move again. Like you know, all that kind of stuff I'm going through. But mm-hmm. ran over friend, get me in contact with a guy who's really about you know extending that hand and, right, right. and looking out for. For, for for people in general, got me in the position. So then, so now you know I have a corporate job. We start a business, and we kind of take off from there. So essentially, I never um, it was it was what I want to say. I I, I should have done more. Like I feel like like a lot of people say, but at the same time, you don't. It's easy to say you should have done more, but it's different to say what I should have done more. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's funny, bro. I was talking to Rob about that. Like, uh, it's funny, like, you know, your football career in college is so demanding, even if you excel in the classroom and you want to possibly do some internships during the summer while you got summer workouts. Usually summer workouts are so demanding. Some, like, sometimes we used to have two in one day. The, your, just the scheduling is hard to, it's hard, especially, and if you do summer school, it's hard to fit an internship in there. Like, so when you graduate from college and, you know, whatever, if you play in the NFL for however long you play, when you're done and, you, like you say, you're looking for a job, you don't even have, you don't have no work experience and you don't have any internship experience. So it's like, you can have a degree in management or finance or business or whatever, but it, it, it doesn't matter. And I feel like the way I was uh, brought up and taught was like, okay, yeah, you get a degree and get a job, like, right? But when you in it, it's, it's really not that similar. Like, yeah, okay, okay, I got the degree. Okay, cool. Oh, I got, well, in my case, I got two degrees. Okay, cool. But now, like, it's like, now, like, I'm, like you said, I'm applying for jobs, but damn, I can't even get a phone call back. I'm applying for interns, just, damn, I can't even get a call back. I can't, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, my, my resume looks good. 
I, I graduated college with a, uh, I went to a, a business school at, at Ohio State. It's like kind of, a, it's a good business school. Like everybody just, you know, you just can't just go and have them be go to business college. Like you have to actually like kind yeah. of have a certain GPA and do all that stuff to kind of get into that college. Yeah. And I graduated with like a 3.3. Um, I'm like, I wasn't a, 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 a all American student athlete, but I was like all regional for three years. So like, yeah. my resume, like I got some good stuff on here. And then like, I kind of go on to the NFL. I got all these awards, like academic awards and uh, all this and that. And that's all, you know, I'm putting on my resume. Like, you know, that's all I have. Right, right, right. Can't even get a call, man. Like, you know, you get shown right. up for interviews and they're like, okay, you know, okay. How do you see yourself? Like, well, look, you know, I'm trying to, Correlate everything to football, like you know, well, in football, I used to do X, Y, Z. You know, coming <laughs> yeah. here, like you know, I don't got all the answers, but you know, if somebody is willing to, you know, put their arm around me, exactly. I'm sure I could learn it. Like, you know, look at, you know, look at my grades. I, I could learn. Like, I, I could, I'm teachable. <laughs> yeah, no exactly. one. Yeah. Crazy, oh, man. I ain't to get it, man. Like, yeah, you don't know how to do this, man. I don't got man, time. I'm telling you, bro. So, you know, but it's a, it's a, um, you know, it's something that you that you go through. And now when I talk to younger kids at college, I try to, you know, like guys that are playing football and, mm-hmm. and like, cause you know, I'm sure when you were in school, when I'm in school, everybody tells you, you, know, you got to get ready for life at the football. You got to get mm-hmm. ready for life. Mm-hmm. But no one says what getting ready for life at the football. So I, when I'm I talk to younger guys now, I tell them like, look, when you, if you think you want to do real estate, for example, I think, you know, most people say that, you know, they're comfortable with going to want to invest in real estate. It's like, you know, always a good, you know, you could do the numbers and make money off of real estate. You know, so when you meet somebody in college or, or playing professional that does real estate, you got to really grab on. Yeah, to hang it. on to that relationship. Yeah. You, know, you got, you can't just, because I know in my mind, now that I'm over there looking at like, if you see us on TV, guys, or we're talking to a guy that plays football for a house, like, I know your schedule, and they think the same. Like, you know, this person don't want to, he don't want me to bother them. I'm not going to bother them. Right. So you got to bother that person while you're a student and get that game. Because right. Who would give you the game, right? Like especially while you're free and you have that influence and people mm-hmm. like, know who you are, mm-hmm. they would give you everything they got on how to be successful, the things they did wrong, and uh, you know what to do in this situation. So you can kind of jump over some of those hurdles earlier. Right. But right. on the side, they don't think you want. They don't think you really care. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> right. Kind of, you, you're busy, so they don't think you really care. So on your end, you have to really grab on the person. So. If you want to, I own a restaurant, and if you want to learn something about the restaurant business, right. you know, come talk to me. I will give you the full game. Right. I'm not going to chase you with the information because on my end, I know you're busy. I, I'm not I'm going to assume that you're just not really that, you're just not really into it. Right. So if you really need it, you know, text somebody, call them. Right, right, right. Them. Yeah, it's, you it's, know, it's, that's it, how you actually do it. That's how you actually get that experience that everybody tell you to get ready for the next level is you have right. to grab people when they come into your life. When you meet somebody, hey, I do X, Y, Z, ask them what they do. I'm kind of interested in that. Let me pick your mind on it. And then that's how you build that. So when you right. are done, you got something to kind of go towards. Like, okay, I know I really want to go on this. Mm-hmm. I know this person is already in there. What can they do to kind of help yeah. me get there? And you, you're saying, you know, this is, and, that's not. Exactly. That's not, and, and, and you know, it's, yeah, man, uh, exactly. And you know, it's crazy um, that you say that because uh it's like it's re- it really is it's really it really is about like who you know and not what you know right because you know um i feel like i feel like you know i, I probably was hard on myself like you know for some years just because like like both of us are you know like we both excel in the classroom right always had good grades stuff like that but it's i always felt like i couldn't correlate that to like to like corp like the corporate world or like some type of good salary job or whatever like that and so and so but it's really when you when you speaking about those kinds of things man it's really not about what you know or you know how skilled you are it's really about who you know because it's a lot of people who don't who aren't even as skilled as us that get those jobs because they know somebody that worked for that company or you know things like that and it's like it's like now we in our 30s and i'm just now we in our 30s and I still struggle with that. Like, I, in my mind, I'm like, I should be, I, like, like my yeah, yeah. Like I say, I'm a, I appreciate it, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm grateful, but in my head, like, I should be doing right, more. Right. Like, why am I not showing up the rank? Why am I not the manager at this time? Uh-huh. And, and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, once you kind of get into some of these positions, you kind of see, like, 
It's about what you do in your position. I'm I'm not in a position where you could just take off and go up the company line. Like I, exactly. you don't you don't you don't see those type of people. You don't talk to those people. Your job is to do this one job. Exactly. So that's kind of like my gripe with it and, and with with the corporate world. I talked to my manager, but I'm like, man, you know, this this is cool and all, but I can't go up from here. Right. I'm, my job is to come in and do this task. But I like I'm not around the people that 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 could even even if someone like me like okay even if you like me or right, you like me mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. But you can't you have nothing right 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 you can't right, well, you've been doing good at this Brian you should go ahead and apply for this you know mm-hmm. it's just not there mm-hmm. and, um and I, I think that's kind of my gripe with it so but I do have a business so you know I can right. you know, I take my energy there and that kind of you know help yeah. me mind because you know I, I got energy to spend there and growing that and yeah. taking that to the next level and making that a generational thing mm-hmm. but, yeah, yeah definitely man <laughs> but like i say other people don't have that like you know right. like i said on my end i was fortunate enough to get with a group of guys we group all, guys i was thinking the same yeah yeah right, and make something happen and that's not every day that's just like a, that's a blessing from the lord that's the only way to put it because definitely <laughs> Many different ways this could have went wrong. Like this could have right. been wrong <laughs> flower, it could have been over and done with already. But you know, now we're at a position where we're growing and expanding and we are mm-hmm. going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. But it was a grind. But if right. I've been grinding with this, this some other people, the grind might have been halted. Yeah, like, yeah, right? yeah. It might it might have been different. Because, yeah, man. You know, and, a lot of stuff. You know? Yeah. And you see so yeah, like you said earlier, man, you're the co-owner of the pit. Um, barbecue grill in Columbus. Um, you know, you got you all have been open for a while now. Uh, like, where did talk about like where what does your business acumen come from? Um, I know you said you majored in business. So, what while during your tenure and you know at Ohio State's business school was it there where you learned a lot about business? Did did someone in your family own a business? Like, where did where did that acumen come from to know? Man, none of that, man. So none of us have been like so. Uh, Mike, like I said, my friend Mike Johnson, he's uh, now he's a guy that I could say is like like skyrocket up the corporate ladder. Like he he and I he didn't play college football. Uh, like I said, he went to Glenville with us. Yeah, he I remember Mike. Mike. I remember Mike. Okay. So Mike, you know, Mike <laughs> funny, was a funny dude. <laughs> he wasn't good at football, so you know, he went on and you know, he did his uh, job and now he's accounting and like literally he's like go up the ranks in corporate America. Yeah. Um, and so he has, he had more, the most corporate background uh, coming into it. DeAndre just, a, he just, he's going to pick up a book. He's going to learn. He's going to, he's going to grind it out. He's going to, yeah. you know, does what he thinks makes sense. Uh, Tim is, uh, he's, he's, I hate to say it, but he's one of the people that's like really smarter than me. Like, <laughs> 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 like, say, but like you know, he's one of those guys that's like, you know, he grasps information and, and yeah. able to get it out from there. And then really going into it, we really didn't have a business background. Like I said, I went to the business school. Chill went to the business school. Um, and we just kind of, you know, in business schools, like I, 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 um, I specialized in marketing. Okay. So that does help, like kind of having that marketing mindset and kind of, yeah. you know, see what's, what other people are doing and if it's yeah, successful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of stuff being visually appealing and how that works. Yeah. Tim studied, uh, specialized in uh, finance and accounting, and like okay. I said, my other partner, Mike, is an accountant. Okay. Basically, his learning was accounting, kind of coming up from there. And we just kind of put our, put our heads together. I mean, like, some of the stuff we did started off was, like, almost like business no-nos, and, you know, we just kind of just grinded it out, though, and yeah. it just kind of made it work. Um, and, and, it's dope, and it's dope that it's for y'all, like, so... Yeah. No, no one's in it like by themselves. Yeah, right, right. And, and it just made sense. I mean, starting off, we wanted to start off. We were going to do a franchise. Uh, we were going to franchise a company. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say a name because I don't want to get to no club. <laughs> 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 we were going to franchise a company, take one of those business uh, from like it was from, from Northeast Ohio. So if I say you know it, but uh, mm-hmm. we're going to do that in Columbus. It was a uh, we met with the guys that own the owners of the company. And basically, it just went south. Like they kind of just start, kind of. Chim and Dre had met with them like a, like a year or two before because they was going to do it before we all got involved. Mm. And the pitch was like this. This is what the pitch looks like. Okay. And I remember going to this meeting. We went to this meeting in January. It was like the twentieth of January. So it was like early in the year. And so we go to this meeting. They kind of tell them all this. Like you got to do this. You got to do this, 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 and all this stuff. Like it's really expensive. Like, you got to use these people to do this. You got to do this. 
And so we like they asked him in the meeting, like, when when did you, like well, this not the deal we had a couple years, you know, a year a couple years ago? What happened? Oh, we just put this in this year. We just put this in this year. And I'm thinking like, bro, it's January 20th. So y'all right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. Right, right. For y'all, so, yeah. For us, so like, so that 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 went that went south. So uh, so then from there it was like, you know, what are we gonna do? We still want to do business. Let's put this thing out there for the time for what are we want to do. And that's when we kind of started you know, really creating the pit model for real. Um, you know, we basically kind of m- not mirror, but we kind of, you know, in Cleveland they got like the BNMs, the uh-huh. hot sauce the uh-huh. open pits and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. And we just kind of took that style of barbecue and just wanted to kind of, you know, bring that to Columbus. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's doing, we want to do a thing in quality. We make everything from scratch, all our rubs, our side dishes, our sauce. Yeah, I saw that every day. Man, and, that's um, and, and y'all like how, how many locations you at now? Two or three? So we have currently well, right now we have one that's open. We had to close one due to COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. COVID hit and the area where it was located at it was just kind of just stretching us too thin. We just couldn't do it, so we have yeah. to uh, move out of that location. Uh, but we have one open now. We'll be opening up another one in in um, in, um, in a month or so, probably about another four weeks. We have and you have, a, and you have a food truck as well. In the food truck, right? And we also got work on our third location. So probably early, early next year, we'll have three locations open, and the, the, um, the food truck will be going as well. So um, it, it's just been a blessing, man. I, yeah. I, I'm biased to the food, man. Our food is really good. And everything like I said is made. Anything is made quality. Um, you like I guess being in the restaurant business, and it sounds kind of funny, but most people, unless you're, it start until you start going to like four or five star restaurants. Um, a lot of restaurants are just not doing things, you know, everything is, you know, they do things to, you know, basically, you know, save money, they may do something a little different here, a little twist, and then they kind of get it out, but, you know, most people are not, like, making sides from scratch in their restaurants, you know, are not, right. you know, hand rubbing their meats. Right, 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 right. Really so that, that's, that, that's what set, set, set uh, the pit apart. That's what says yeah, the food exactly, yeah, I mean, it, 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 just being frank and honest, like I say, just kind of, you know, before the restaurant industry, I guess I, you know, you just didn't notice that you go somewhere, you go to Applebee's or something, and you see the food come out, and you're like, okay, whatever, it's fine. But now that you went in, you just you start to kind of generate, like, you know, this this ain't made. Right, 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 right. Probably got some bag or something. They just kind of cut open and heat it up. <laughs> right. And, you know, you just start kind of noticing that's kind of that stuff and that trend. And like I say, it's it's. And that's really, like I said, that's our, our, our niche in the game. Like, we make mm-hmm. anything from scratch. You know, we plan on continuing to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's what we yeah, are. that's, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's super dope, man. Uh, so a question I wanted to ask you, um, you know, obviously, coming where we come from, it's not a lot of, we don't, well, I, I don't know a lot of people. I'm not sure if you do. But we typically don't know a lot of people that, who are restaurant owners in the restaurant industry that owns um, different locations. So. Uh, if we have any like younger listeners or high schoolers or college um, listeners, and maybe they want to get into the restaurant business without like you know mapping mapping out everything, kind of just give me your act, your, you all's action steps of like what you did to start a restaurant, like right? Because obviously there's a bunch of paperwork, and then you got to buy the, like, obviously the company, you got to build the company and buy the company and all those things. Then you got to find a location. Then I mean. So just talk about the action steps, kind of gear the action steps, just in case so we have someone that watches or listens that wants to do it. Okay, so I, I think what what we did, um, like I said, I'm gonna give you what I think you should have did, what you should do, and I guess what we kind of, what we didn't do, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we had some learning curves in the jump. So I think that the first thing that we did is, uh, we kind of picked the location before we even picked exactly what we were selling. That was just a mistake in general. Uh, we had found a spot that we wanted to be at. We figured like this would be a good spot to put in the restaurant. Uh, we felt like the people around here would come in and support us. And they did, but like I said, at the same time, we really literally almost picked the location before we picked what we was going to be selling at yeah. that location. Yeah. Um, I think if, if, if I guess what you should do is know what you want to, who are you? So if you're franchising, you know, and, and for, I'm not want to talk bad about franchising because, you know, that's a great way to get into the business where, you know, mm-hmm. someone took the knots already, they're ready, they, you know, you teach it to them and then you kind of, you learn it from them and then you kind of use what they what they taught you um, and kind of apply it. And then now you still, it's kind of like having a, you know, there are your owners, so you always 
indebted to them and always are like literally paying them a proportion of money for you being open. Mm -hmm. But they teach you right away what you like, okay, this is what you're doing, this is what you're ordering from, this is mm -hmm. what you're making food, this is what you need to be hiring, how many people you need to be in these, in these spots to kind of do the job, and this is how you train those people you know, from there. So on our end, um, we, we start off with our food, though. So like I said, we didn't want to do the franchise, so we want to open up our restaurant from scratch, so we just focus in on the food. So a lot of our recipes came from family members. So like I said, we went home. We literally went to Cleveland. We went around the best cooks in our family. Mm. We asked, how do you make mac and cheese? How do you make your yams? How do you make your grains? And we kind of wrote it down. We started making it, and we started tasting it. Okay, this tastes good, but... Is it too hard of a process for a restaurant? We got to turn this out every day. So mm -hmm. we got a process that, you know, you know I mean, to be honest, we, we do a lot of stuff. Like we shred our own cheeses for our mags and we take eight hours to make our greens. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's done in a way that, you know, that we can upscale it and, and actually do it. But if you got yeah. a process like, okay, this tastes good, but, you know, this is not really, you can't do this every day. Or you got this specialty ingredient and it costs X, Y, Z a pound. You know, we can't, you know, we can't bring that in. <laughs> it, does, it, does, it doesn't make sense. So right. I would say start with the food, start with your menu, figure out what how it makes sense, and then can you buy it in high quantity? Like so, you know, obviously you want to open a restaurant, if you got a great recipe, that's good. But if you can't get it from nowhere, you gotta go, you're trying to buy this one item from Kroger every every month, you know, it's mm -hmm. just you know, it's probably not gonna work out. So, you know, right. you gotta figure out what's your recipe, what you're selling, where can I get it from, and how much that stuff costs. And then so you gotta understand your costs. And so once you understand your costs on your food, and I would say find a location, figure out where you want to be, why do you want to be there? Is it you want to go like an RC, if you're doing barbecue or is there no barbecue around? Um, is it a chicken spot around the corner that's already really popular and you want to sell chicken? Like that, you know, that's a chance that may not work. So right, right. find a location and then once again, track the cost. Um, if you're buying or most people starting off will be leasing the spot. So can you afford the rent to be there? Because most mm -hmm. people, you know, if you have good credit and have you know something to put down on it? You know they'll put you in a spot, but once you get in there, do you really, you know, do the math? Do you think me selling food for this, and I make this much on a mm -hmm. meal, mm -hmm. is that enough for me to cover this rent, the bills, the rest right. of the overhead, and then right. pay myself, as in pay my staff and all that? Well, pay your staff, then pay yourself, because be honest, you're gonna pay your staff before you pay yourself. Of course, not no one's gonna show up to work. So, right, right. <laughs> you know, that you gotta take into consideration. So. Once you kind of have that down, then I feel like, um, you know, then you actually kind of look at the money situation. Because, like I said, obviously, you're starting the business, so there's, you know, upfront costs. Are you getting a business loan? Have you been saving? If you are saving, how much does stuff cost to kind of get open? Mm -hmm. And then once you get there, now you got to roll. Once you figure out your full menu, where you're going with things, um, you know, financing to get that stuff open. And then once you get into a spot, it's coming down to marketing. Um, mm -hmm. One thing for us and us being in Columbus, Ohio, when especially opening up and now is, you know, once we say, all right, myself and my partner, Chindi, we play football for Ohio State, you know, we could get some buzz. Like, okay, oh, these guys oh, play of course. Ohio State. Right. We could get a, a camera crew to come out. Uh, of course, yeah. That, that's, that's marketing all the way. <laughs> you know, you could, you know, if we're going into different locations and people are willing to come and write a little article, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you could do that kind of stuff. But, you know, a common person might not be able to do that. So what are you doing for marketing? Are you going to be, you know, social media is, is great for marketing. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, you can get yourself popping on there. You mm -hmm. know, you could might have a lot of followers or you know somebody in the neighborhood with a lot of followers. Hey, come over here and do this for me. Mm -hmm. Get your free mail, you know, shoot a video on my spot type of deal. And, um, you know, then you got to look into marketing. And once you get there, now it's to, now you got people coming in the door. Now you got, you know, uh, you got to be consistent with your food. So now, you know, you can't come here one day and the stuff tastes like this. You come back the next day, it tastes like this. It might be good both days, but that's still not good for your customer because now they don't know what they're getting because one day they liked it like this and they came the next day and now it's like this and they don't like it and now they're not coming back. So, right. you know, this kind of stuff like that you have to learn with. Like I said, us going right into it, you just have to learn. You know, mm -hmm. If this is how you make certain things, um, take it from there. I mean, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like it's, I said, it's, it's, I would say those are the best steps to go through it. Yeah, but, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> it, it, that's the thing I feel like I said about a restaurant. Um, I think when you think about a restaurant, it's you. It's not rocket science. Like what we're doing is not rocket science. For you, 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 I could take you, LeBron. You can walk into my restaurant today, and I can tell you 
what needs to be done for you to you know, like be here and get orders and get it out. Yeah. But it is kind of hard work, you know. Yeah. It's it, you know, so it's simple to say. It's kind of hard to do when it starts. Yeah. You know, clean. You know, being consistent. You're dealing with food products, so you get dirty. And you know, you're dealing with you're cooking in the back. You get hot. You know, fire. Of course, you know, that of course. kind of stuff. So, but it's it's definitely worthwhile to say that you own something. I mean, really, that's this is on it. Definitely worthwhile to say that you know you own something that this is yours and you want to throw mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And 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 like you said earlier, it's, it's generational. It can be generational, yeah. and that's and and that's the biggest thing. Um, yeah, man. So, you know, like I said earlier, you know, I call this a podcast, After Effect podcast. So, you know, you know, you've been an athlete your whole life. You played in big games, played in the Big Ten national championships, played in the league for five years. Um, now you're a business owner, successful business owner. What would you say? What is Brian Brownie's After Effect? What would you, I think us as athletes, we all, we, we go through pain, sorrow, rage, wins, losses, in, in, injuries, right? What would be something that you, you know, would take with you for the rest of your life and um, teach to your kids or, you know, maybe if you're giving a speech, what is Brian Brown's after effect of your entire athletic career? Uh, man, I want to say for me personally, I'm a I'm an officer lineman, and I, and I feel like I, that's who I am as a person, man. I mean, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a guy that that's known for just you know putting the work in, mm -hmm. uh, putting the team first, um, and getting things done that way. And I, I try to carry that same mindset to my family, uh, mm -hmm. put my family with. You know, I got one, I got a wife, a daughter, a mother-in-law lives with me as well. You know, what is what do, what do they need? You know, right, what, right, right. What, what are they going through today? Like, you know, mm -hmm. what, 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 what's, what are their feelings towards this situation? And I guess I don't say it to like, you know, to forget yourself, not to love yourself, but I mm -hmm. feel like if you're taking care of those people, those people will return that back to you. Right, right, right. We'll come um, back. I think uh, throughout my career, no matter where I was at, uh, like I said, as you see, the NFL bounced around many of teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always was a respected guy. People always could look to me, respect, always um, like, mm -hmm. you know, about the work, but about doing it in a, in, a, in a good manner, having a good attitude towards the work. Right. And, you know, they always have a joke. <laughs> always have a joke. <laughs> always. always yeah. Laugh, have fun, but at the same time, know what, know what needs to get done and then get it done in a, uh, in a great manner. And, uh, just kind of always wanted to kind of keep that above myself. You know, hey, this is mm -hmm. the work that's done. I don't gotta, you don't have to gripe about it, be sad about it, because you know this is the work that needs to be done. How right, good right. I towards it, always, and uh, and get it done. And like I said, at the end of the day, try to have a smile while doing it, and I, right. I guarantee that it, it helps out. <laughs> <laughs> it helps out. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, yeah, man, that's that's a great after effect, man. Again, man, you're a busy man. Uh, it's, it's it's college football Saturday, man. I appreciate you jumping on the podcast with me. Uh, but, but before, yeah, man, before we end, you know, I'm big on just. Giving flower, giving guys flowers while they're here. Obviously, 2020 has been super weird with the pandemic. <laughs> a lot of different people passing. Kobe, you know, we had Kobe, and we got Black Panther, Black Mama, then the Black Panther, you know, all in the same year. So, yeah, man, I just want to say um, that I think you're doing a great job. I think you're putting on for Cleveland. I think you inspiring youth to become uh, business owners, but also um, having, you know, the word thoughts to say, hey, but I'm still have a foot in corporate America. Um, uh, you know, and again, man, I just think you're doing a great job, and I just want to give you know, your flowers right here, man. And also, I think it's super dope that y'all that you all started the restaurant group together, and not you know, so it was kind of everybody kind of had to put their ego to the side because that's anytime you go into a business venture with four people, if any one of those guys gets some kind of ego, like it, you know, it could, it could go wrong. So yeah. um, that's super dope that you were able to do that, man. And again, like I said, man, just I just, I just appreciate you carving out some time to jump on with me. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir, man. Yeah, take it easy. And we'll be in All touch, right. man. I'll, I'll, I'll right. try, to ha try to get you back on at some point. Yeah, yeah, man. Hit me up, man. I love what you're doing here, man. You're cranking them out, man. You got, you got great guys on here, man. So yeah, man, I appreciate trying to, trying to do it, man. I appreciate some time to talk and vent. You know, you now you get older. You know, you think no one cares about that stuff no more, I'm man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But it's, it's <laughs> actually, out, right, it's, it's, it's valuable, though. So it's like, yeah. that's why I started, because I think, it's a it's a place it's a safe it's a safe space for you know you, know, you the guests to vent or, or relive um certain things and then me as the host to relive and talk about whatever so yeah man it's it's just an authentic conversation honestly <laughs> that's for sure that's for yeah. sure man i love it man oh yeah definitely man but yeah i'll uh i'll stay tapped in with you man y'all be safe out there all right you too bro all right bro
Peace. So yeah, guys, again, um, you know, Brian Brown, a business owner, uh, former Ohio State guard, NFL guard. Um, hope you guys really enjoy episode 17. Hope you got something out of it. Um, I feel like he gave a lot of free game on just the transitions from the NFL to being a business owner. And still, even though he's a full-time business owner, still be also being a full-time worker to take care of his family and provide for his family. Um, so yeah, guys, be on the lookout. Um, Hopefully after like episode 20, I'll have some merch in production uh, for the podcast that will be available for purchase. Uh, so just keep rocking with us. Subscribe on YouTube. Um, comment any questions, any, any way or things that you think can be good or better to make the podcast better. Comment. Uh, wherever you listen to your pods, whether that's Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, subscribe on there, rate us, let us know what you think about it. And uh, See you on episode eight, eight, episode eighteen. Peace.